Good day, audience. This is Stephen Chang coming to you live from Simha Yoga Lab in Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the full streaming schedule, as well as for my payment information for Venmo and for PayPal. Venmo is my preferred way of payment, and my handle is Simha Yoga Lab, and the last four digits uh, is 8096 if you're prompted for a verification code. Um, classes are $10, and if you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine. Please do the best you can. I'm streaming on Instagram and on Facebook, and the videos are saved as posts. I also upload the same videos to my YouTube channel, which is Simha Yoga Lab. Now, if you're not actually streaming with me, and the audio and video off of uh, Facebook and Instagram are a little bit shaky, you might want to migrate over to YouTube instead. Uh, YouTube has way better audio and video, um, and also as you're practicing, you can bring it up to your um, smart TV. So um, having a larger screen on your TV might be a much better practicing experience. So that's my recommendation to you. Okay, today's class is Open Flow. It's level one and level two, and um, for those of you who are newer to my practice, welcome. Please make sure that you have any kind of injuries, special conditions, or limitations that you always check in and pull back um, on poses that are not appropriate for your condition. Always make some good decisions about what is appropriate and what is not appropriate for your body. You can always uh, skip poses if it's not for you, um, hang out in child's pose, down dog, something like that, until we move on to the next thing or take your own modifi modified positions or um, other variations that you like and that you can do for your condition. All right, so I encourage you to always make some good decisions. Okay, sitting up tall for those of you with tighter hips or lower back, I recommend elevation. Sitting up on a block or a blanket will make your cross-legged position a lot more comfortable. Sit up tall, arms face up. Fingers come to the arm with the rock, thumb and index fingers touching. As you ground evenly through your seat, let your shoulders gently drop. Lips touching, eyes closed, and start to center the breath. Deep inhales and exhales through the nose. Chin toward the right shoulder. Release. 
knees back center, drop the right hand, left ear to the left shoulder, left hand to the right side. And chin toward the left shoulder. Release, back to center, drop the left hand, chin toward the chest. Big circles with the head in one direction. Ear to one side, roll it back, opposite side, roll the center. Take a few more rounds from side to pace. <clears throat> Back to center and pause. We are taking the opposite direction. And then back to center again. Lifting the chin parallel to the floor, neutral spine. Coming onto blocks, extending the legs forward, separating the feet and supporting to each side, and turn your toes toward each other, and then roll up, drop in. Go out, draw in, outer rotation circling. Back to center, switch around. Back to center again. Cross your shins, opposite shin on top. Raise your arms and back, extend, twist to the right on the exit. Arms up, other side. Center again. Side bends, right hand down, left arm overhead. Back to center, other side. Center again, legs forward, forward fold. Back up, left leg extends to the corner of the mat on the left side. Step the right foot down. So you want the heel to be lined up roughly with your right seat and your legs are 90 degrees. So the foot needs to turn out the right foot. All right, and let's twist to the right. Back to center, keep the legs, come to twist to your left. Back to center again, frame the left leg with your hands. Pivot to your right heel, you might even have to walk the heel up a little bit. Roll the right knee forward, roll the right knee back. Roll forward, roll back. Roll forward, roll back two more times. Forward and back, forward and back. Keep the right knee rolling back and gently press your right thigh away. So you're getting a little bit more extension to the inner right thigh, the hip crease, and the groin. Take it back to neutral, draw the right heel back behind you. Now keep the legs 90 degrees. Left hand to the floor, right arm is up, and gently reach forward to fold. Relengthen your spine, realign, and draw forward a little bit more deeply. Start to roll back up, roll the left foot to the outside of the left, sorry, roll the left leg to the outside of the left foot, reach your left hand further out, left arm down, right arm overhead, right side extension. And then keep the right side extension, start to move, take the right shoulder down, grip the right fingertips to the floor, inhale, relax then. Exhale as you reach your right hand further forward, let the right shoulder start to draw down, going into your thoracic twist. Now keep the resistance of the left arm so your left shoulder should stay lifted. It is the right shoulder that draws down. And that will deepen your rotation of the spine. Start to walk the hands back in, lift the torso up, raise your left leg. Left hand stays to the floor, right arm is up. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, lengthen. 
Exhale, twist five times, two more. Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. Stay here, twisting to the right side, to the left side, sorry. And extend through the right fingertips even more. Come back to center, come to twist to the right. And then side bending over the left leg. So lean the torso over your left leg, left arm if you can. Left tricep to press to the inside of the left leg, and that will give you some resistance to stack the shoulders a little bit more. And then reach your right arm over the and extend. Let's take a half bind here. Right arm up and behind you. Use that hand to the lower back to help you create resistance to stack your shoulders some more. Now keep the stack through your shoulders, raise your right arm up and overhead again. If you have more extension, reach further. If you have the bind of the right hand to your left foot, go ahead and take it. Start to release, come back up, carry the right leg forward. So now reach the right heel over to the right hand corner of your mat, arms up and gently forward fold. This time grabbing the inside of the heel or anywhere to the inside of the legs. Lengthen and fold. Take it back up, keep the right leg extending to the corner of the mat on the right side. Step the left foot down. So again, legs should be 90 degrees. Walk your left foot far enough forward so that you can comfortably ground the left heel. Okay? Uh, let's twist to your left, left hand behind you, right arm wraps around the left knee. Take it back to center. Come to twist to the right. Take it back to center. Frame your right leg with your hands. You might even move your left heel further out and pivot to the heel so you have the ball of the, of the heel of the foot. Make it a little bit more mobile for your roll. Roll the left foot forward and then roll back. Roll forward, roll back five times. Forward and back. Forward, and back one more time, roll forward, roll back, stay rolling back, gently press your left thigh away, giving more extension to the inner left leg, hip crease and groins. Release, back to neutral, draw the left heel back. Legs are again roughly 90 degrees. Right hand to your floor, left arm is up, inhale lengthen. Exhale, reach forward for your forward fold. So as you extend forward, right, think about lengthiness of the spine. Feel for the stretch of the back of the right leg, but also to the stretch to your lower back. Release, come back up, reach your right hand further out, right forearm down. So first measurement here, Right shoulder over the elbow, so you want to take 90 degrees here. Left arm overhead and extend. Ah, sorry, you needed to also roll to the outer side of the right foot. Extend. Then let the left shoulder start to descend, left hand comes down to the floor. Now keep the resistance of the right arm. So right shoulder stays lifted, inhale, lengthen, exhale, crawl, left foot, the left fingertips further out, and the left shoulder starts to, starts to drop as you deepen your middle spinal twist, thoracic twisting. Walk your left hand back in, lift back up, walk your right hand in. Now roll the right toes back up again, supporting with your right hand to the floor, left arm extending out. Inhale, lengthen here. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. 
Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist and stay twisting toward the right. Release, back to center, counter twist to your left. Stay counter twisting to your left and start to side bend over the right leg. Now if you can, your right arm can press the inside of the right leg for resistance so that you can stack your shoulders and reach your left arm overhead. Let's take that with a half five. Left hand behind you. Use that resistance of the hand to your lower back to stack your shoulders more actively. And stay with a side bend. Raise your left arm up and overhead and reach a little bit more deeply or find the left hand to the right foot. Release, take back up, carry your left foot forward and take the left foot to the left corner of the mat again, arms up and forward roll. And so anytime you're taking a forward fold, always be mindful about lengthiness of the spine, try not to round, try not to shrug your shoulders, right? So lengthiness. And also keep in mind that the back of the neck, right, should be neutral as well. So if your torso is angling forward in this way, the gaze should not be forward. The gaze should be downwards, right, and slightly forwards, so that the spine is staying in the neutral position. Take it back up, separate your feet a little bit wider. Left hand to the floor, right arm up, and let's go to forward fold again, but this time grab the outside of the left foot, re-lengthen, and refold. Now try to draw the left shoulder back, right shoulder forward, deepen the forward fold with a twist. Center, switch sides. Right hand down, left arm up, reach forward and grab the outside right foot with the left hand. Relengthen your spine, exhale, deepen. And then once you have a nice, uh, sturdy forward fold, draw the right shoulder back and left shoulder forward to give you more rotation here. A little bit more activity through your shoulders. Release, take it back up again. Raise your arms up high. Exhale, reach forward, take the hands to the floor. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, crawl the hands further forward. Again, realign your spine so the gaze should not be uh, forward like this. It should be toward the floor with a lengthy spine. And then work progressively into a deeper forward fold. Now, perhaps for those of you who are low enough, you can take the forearms down. You may even take two fists and the forehead to the fists. And start to release, walk it back in. Hands to the inside of your thighs above your knees. And as you pull up, your knees will bend. Take the soles of your feet together. Move the feet slightly further forward. Grab the insides of the feet or thread the arms underneath the legs and fold. Take it back up. Separate your feet. Step the feet to the floor. Support your hands slightly behind you. You can also lean back as well. Pick up the feet. Turn your toes out. Lift the right heel higher. Left heel lower. Cross them over, widen. Left leg on top, widen. Right leg on top, widen. Left, widen. Right, widen. Left, widen. Four, widen. Four, 
y root 5, y root 5, y root 6, y root 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1. Stay here. Widen out your uh, toes and heels together. Lift and lower. Lift, lower. Lift, lower. 4, lower. 5, lower. 6, lower. 7, lower. 8, lower. 9, lower. 10, lower. Lift again. Extend. Bend. Extend. Bend. Three, bend. Four, bend. Five, bend. Six, bend. Seven, bend. Eight, bend. Nine, bend. Ten, bend. Soles of feet together, knees apart. Come back up this time. Draw the heels in closer. In a lengthen. Exhale, fold. Now, if you can press your elbows to your thighs, give yourself a little bit more hip opening and some resistance, right, as you draw forward. Come back up again, step the feet down, crease slightly forward, and then windshield wipe your knees, side to side. Take it back to center, step the feet down, tabletop, fingertips are pointing forward. Down, keep the left foot down, right ankles to knee, and then step the left foot closer, and then press your heart center toward the right shin. Make sure you flex your right foot. And start to walk your hands in closer, lift the seat, and stepping on the left heel. Keep flexing. Now draw the right knee downwards as well. Now are you then able to tip forward to come to your toe tips? Now you can always keep your fingertips to full for balance or take one hand off the floor, take the other hand off the floor and see if you can balance here. Now to release, take the seat back down, extend the left leg forward, extend the right leg forward, arms up and fold. Take it back up, bend your knees, step the feet to the floor, tabletop again. Fingertips point forward and lift. Now try to lift the hips high enough. Now, do the best you can to lift the hips beyond the knees, so higher than the knees if you can. And take the seat back down. Left ankle on top of the right knee, make sure you flex your left foot. Then step the right heel in and draw the heart center toward the left shin. Are you able to lift the seat? Right? And try to keep the heel down. No, actually, your heel with the hands behind you first. Now let the left knee get heavier. Now, if you run further, can you shift the weight forward so that you can start to go to your tiptoes? If you can get to your tiptoes, either keep both hands on the floor or take one hand off the floor 
maybe the other hand off the floor, and see if we can balance here. All right, start to release. Take the seat back down. Extend the legs forward, arms up, and forward fold. Take it back up. Draw the heels back behind you. Onto your hands and knees. Let the knees be together and the feet apart. Take Virasana. Now, for those of you who can sit all the way down with your feet slightly wider, take the full pose. However, for those of you who cannot, right, my hips are tight and I cannot sit down all the way, so what I will do is take a block. You can also take a blanket, right? So if you're sitting on a block, it'll be a lot easier for you to take this position. So you inner thighs together, knees together, if you can. Now, if your hips are really tight, you might not be able to. Even if you have a little bit of space, what you're working to do is to get the inner thighs toward each other. Right? And the feet have to be a little bit wider than your hips so that you should be able to insert your hands in between the hips and the feet. Right? So this is Virasana, parents' pose. Okay, so we'll just take a few breaths here. This is really good to reset the knees, right? Um, for those of us who have weaker knees, or if, let's say if um, uh, oftentimes when we walk up and down the stairs, kind of feel a little bit of misalignment, right? So this is a really great way in a very stable position. And of course, this is relative based on how flexible you are, right? If you are more flexible, maybe you can sit all the way down. So that's your hips and your knees and your quads, right? If you're tighter, you might have to elevate. You might even have to elevate a little higher. So right now, I'm sitting on this height. Maybe this is not high enough. Maybe you have to go here. If that's the case, sit like this. If that is not enough, I don't recommend for you to sit like that. You might want to take this and a blanket. That way you have even more elevation, but you're also uh, a little higher and with a little bit more help. Right? So those are nice options. Or if you have two blocks, right? take two blocks and stack them one over the other. The key point is stability in your seat so that you don't put your knees in any kind of vulnerable position. You want to be able to very um, to stretch them, right? To give them more openness with the stretch, but very mindfully and very um, safely, right? So stability is a matter of safety. And so that's roughly probably a minute, minute and a half or so. So we're going to start to ease our way out. When we ease our way out, you're going to feel a rush of blood to your legs, right? So just be very easy, be very supportive, right? Walk your hands forward and start to lift the seat. Right? You should start to feel the rush of blood. Tuck the toes under. Walk your hands back in and start to lift the knees and come to a very short down dog. Draw the heels down so you're in a forward fold at this point with your hands supporting and just kind of start to bring some circulation by swaying your hips out side to side. Right, we're going to take that one more time. Bend the knees. Take the knees together, thighs, inner thighs together. Untuck the toes. Walk your feet a little bit wider. Take the seat back down. So now hopefully between the first one and the second one, this time it's a little bit easier for you to get into, right? Maybe your inner thighs are a little closer together. Maybe you're going a little bit deeper, a little bit easier on the quads, on the knees, on the hips, right? So once you took the first one, you release it, you come back to the second one, it gets a little bit easier because you've allowed the muscles to release, right? To the point that maybe if you're feeling com comfortable or confident enough, you can remove the block. Or if the block, um, you still need something, but the block is a little high, go to a blanket, right? That can that can compress a little bit so that you can come down a little bit. And right, so for those of us who can take this pose, um, um, Virasana is really important for the knees, right? It's a matter of strengthening them, giving them the flexibility necessary. And then also, if there's minor, right? Minor is the key. 
minor misalignments by folding it this way and stabilizing this way, perhaps some of those slight misalignments can kind of work themselves out. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes when you like twist your ankle, twist your knees, or something goes out of whack, what do you do? You kind of swing it out, right? So like if it's your wrist, you kind of go like that, right? So, so or you traction them and you pull them. It's the same concept. If something is slightly misaligned, if you stretch them, open them, and move them around a little bit, sometimes they kind of go back in place, right? And so in a way, this is what we're trying to do here. In a very stable, slow, and mindful way, we're stretching things out just to kind of put them back into place. All right, so let's come out again. Support it with your hands. Walk the hands slightly forward, lift the seat. Tuck the toes under. Maybe walk your hands in just a little bit and then start to lift the knees. You're in a very short down dog. And just lengthen and draw the heels down as your muscles allow you to adjust accordingly. And then when you're ready, you sway out your hips side to side. squat here. Turn your toes out. Now for those of you who find it difficult to do your yogic squat but you have a block. Take your block. Take your yogic squat in a block. Now when you take it in a much more easy way like this you might actually get more openness because you're not fighting so hard, right? To kind of like stabilize the position without the assist of the block. Sometimes when your hips are tight if you take the block away and you descend it a little bit more, you might feel too much compression, right? And you might feel too much work. So then the muscles re uh, react a little bit and you get actually even tighter. Unless you then go and you adjust it accordingly and then your body can have um, a little bit of release because you have enough width for your feet, you have enough support, right? So that might be helpful if you can adjust and get to a comfortable position. But maybe some of us are just in like a weird um, level of flexibility where you just can't find that comfortable place. Maybe if you took a block and sat on it, you can adjust your feet accordingly, right? You can move your feet forward a little bit, you can move your feet wider, so that now you can still work on that flexibility, but at the same time, not have to fight with gravity, not have to fight with holding up your pose, right? This might actually give you the flexibility that you're looking for because your muscles are not reacting. So you're just going to walk your feet in and closer as much as you can to the point where you're feeling that hip opening, but a little bit of work, right? You don't want it to be so easy that you're not doing anything either, right? So what we're looking to do now is to take a stretch. Left hand to the floor, pressing the left arm to the inside of the left leg, reach your right arm out. Right, so first expand with that length and openness, and then the right hand back behind you, half up. Now if you have the extension to take a full bind, take the left arm, internally rotate your left hand, and wrap the left arm behind you to connect your fingers to take the bow. And you might need to lean to your left just a little bit. So now I'm here in um, the yogic squat with the full bind, but I'm sitting down, right, on a block. So this is helping me. However, if I'm not using the block, my seat might be a little bit lower. It requires a little bit more work. This is what I'm working for ultimately, right? I understand, for those of you who have tight hips, this is not easy. So if that's the case, elevate on a book, on a block, whatever you need. All right, let's take it to the other side. Come back to neutral. Right hand to the floor, press your right tricep to the inside of the right leg. Reach your left arm out first, so getting the extension. Then internally rotate your left hand, wrap behind you. Draw the left shoulder to open. You may stay here in a half bind. Maybe this is good enough, right? If you have a full bind, uh, lift your right hand. Internally rotate your right hand. Wrap the right arm back behind you, make the connection, and then once you have the connection, 
You need to lift back up a little bit, rotate through the spine, draw the left shoulder back, and look toward the left side. Release, back to center. And we'll stay here for a few more breaths just to get the uh, yogic squat. Now, for those of you where yogic squat in general is difficult, right? Let's say you don't want to work with a block, but you want to work within your capacity, right? When you first come into yogic squat, wherever and however you come in, you want to walk your feet wider, right? So this is for those of you who have tighter hips where yogic squat is difficult. Let the feet go wider, let the toes turn up. Then, where your hands are, start to walk them in just a little bit, and with the hands supporting, let the seat come back. Get to the point where you're comfortable, and then you're just going to hold it, and then feel a little bit of that openness. Then, in time, as you keep holding it, hopefully, your, your muscles start to release, and they can eventually get to the full yogic squat position. Now, if that still doesn't work and you need a little bit of help, elevation, right? So if you take a blanket, you step on the blanket with the heels, you see? I'm elevated, right? So now I'm a lot more um, comfortable uh, to draw the seat down because my heels are elevated, right? So basically I'm taking the floor to meet my feet instead of my feet meeting the floor, which is much more difficult. Now I have resistance with the heels pressing against the blankets. Now, drawing your seat down, this might be your answer, right? So that is stepping on the blanket. Um, if you want to roll up your mat instead and roll up the mat to just get a little bit of height. If you have a, sh a shorter book, you can step on a shorter book. Any of those things might be helpful. So this is to get you into a comfortable yogic squat. Yogic squats are important because it's a stretch for your hips, for your glutes, and your lower back, right? It's just general flexibility in the hips. And um, uh, from some of the studies I've read, um, basically, just to kind of boil it down to the basics, right? Um, human beings, we need to squat more. The other thing we need to do, we're primates, right? to hang more. So if you have the opportunity to go to like a park or, or something, right, and you can hang on to something, just let the feet come off the floor, hang on to a bar, and let all of this extend, right? Because uh, the human body is not meant to sit down for more than eight hours, right, or for eight hours a day. Um, we're not meant to sit down for that long period, right? And so we're getting a lot of low back issues, neck and shoulder issues, because we're just sitting too much, right? We need more squatting, we need more hanging, okay? Movement in general. Okay, start to release, lift back up, heels back down, and then again, make sure you sway it out side to side, decompress your hips a little bit, bring some circulation back. And so I think by the time we stand up, you're gonna feel like your hips are completely different, okay? So hands come in a little bit, with your hands supporting, bend at the knees and the seat drop a little. Lift the head, lift the upper back, shift the weight back towards your heels and come up through the strength of your legs. Right? Up your hips feel. Right? Now you feel like your hips are really open, I'm sure. Okay, so let's come to the front of the mat. Keep your feet slightly separated. Okay? Take the arms out, bend the elbows, palms are facing down. We're just going to twist side to side. Twist to the right, to the left. Right, left. Right, left. Four, four. Ten times. Five, five. Six, six. Seven, seven. Eight, eight. Nine, nine, ten. Back to center, right hand down, left arm up, side leg to the right, center, right, center, ten times, right, center, four, center, five, center, six, center, seven, center, eight, center, nine, center, ten, center. Switch sides, right arm up, left hand alongside the left leg. Side bend left, center, two, 
center, three, center, four, center, five, center, six, center, seven, center, eight, center, nine, center, ten, center, hands to the hips, to the side view. Draw the shoulders open, elbows energetically toward each other to spread the front of the chest, the collarbones, and engage the upper back. Lift through your sternum, your heart center, looking up. Continue to draw the shoulders back and gently looking upwards. You're not dropping the head all the way back and looking straight up, you're looking angling forward, maybe about 45 degrees. So you want to honor the length of the back of the neck, but you also want to open up the throat a little bit with the back bend. Notice how the back bend happens from the mid spine upwards, right? And not from the head dropping back. Come back to center. This time, elbows, shoulders, reach forward as you round the spine, chin forward. Chin. Come back to center. Step the feet in together, stepping on the left foot, pick up the right knee, tree pose, open up the knee to right side. Now take that right foot higher up the right leg if you can, above the knee, if you cannot, go below the knee. Now for those of you who are usually pretty tight in your tree pose, and you cannot take the foot higher than your knees, are you able to take the foot higher today, right? You did so much preparation with the hips. Did I help you open up the hips enough to get you to the tree pose where your foot is a little higher, right? Or if you normally take the foot higher and you are maybe still there feeling a little bit, is it a little bit easier now, right? So that's what you're looking for. Arms up and out and balance in here. Take the arms up high, release your right foot, step it over to the right side. So you might be off your mat, right? So you should be facing forward, so you might be off your mat. Right? So right toes turn out, right hand alongside the, uh, along the right leg, left arm overhead for the side stretch. Left arm up and behind you, half bind. Stack your shoulders some more. Side bend if you want. Now you can keep your right hand supporting here, or if you want more uh, stretch to the left side of the neck, gently press the side bend. Right? Gently, gently. Release. Come back up. Reach your right arm forward and twist to your left. Use your left hand behind you to help you draw the left shoulder further back. Release, take it back to center, bend the left knee in order to pick up the right foot and step back to center, walk it out side to side. And so you had kept the left leg extended and try to lift the right foot. It's a lot harder, it's not impossible, but you kind of have to end up locking into the knee to gather that, um, um, that strength to lift. Not necessary, not necessarily safe either, right? So if you bend the knee, you can pick up the foot a lot easier, right? So it's a matter of function. All right, stepping on the right foot, pick up the left knee, tree pose, second side. So if you can, right, lift up high enough to take the sole of the foot above the knee joint. All right, for those of you, again, compare what your normal sensations are when you start to take the tree versus all that hip opening we did earlier on, how does that affect your tree pose now, right? So, those of you who normally take a little bit lower, are you able to take a higher, maybe still a little bit tight, but better than you normally can do this, right? So that is the key. I'm looking for progression. A little bit more mobility, a little bit easeful, a little bit more easefulness, right? In your um, attempts to take a deeper pose. Okay, when you're ready, arms up and out. 
Now, when you take a tree, you want to also actively think about rotating that knee back in space, right? And this gives you a little bit more broadness in the hips. Take the arms back, back up, step the left foot a little bit wider onto that side. I would say that's about a foot and a half or two feet, okay? So you still want to stay mostly standing on the right leg. Left hand to left leg support, right arm up the right leg, and then side bending over to the right. So you should feel a nice extension. I feel also a lot of action in my right hand flexor. Right? Supporting the left hand. Let's take out the half five, right hand behind you. Look to take the right hand to give you resistance so that you can stack the right shoulder more actively. So draw the front of the right shoulder back. Maybe that might afford you enough leverage to go deeper in the side stretch. And then we add it on left hand, right side of the neck. Right? So gentle, applied pressure, gentle. Right, so neck is a very, very delicate structure, so we don't want to overstretch and pull too hard. Just a little bit of encouragement. All right, start to release, come back up. So again, to come out the pose, we're gonna bend that standing right knee, pick up a foot, and step back to center, walking it out side to side. Okay, so I'm gonna walk the feet wide, but this time, turn your toes inwardly, okay? So that's now inner rotation of your hips, right? Gentle now, bend the knees slightly toward each other, right? So if you feel any kind of um, too much pressure to the outer knees, then I want you to back out a little bit, right? And also, if you turn your toes in this way, it's really stressful for your knees, then don't do it. This is for, I think, average people can turn the uh, toes in a little bit and get into that inner rotation and bend the knees relatively well without too much discomfort, right? It might not be like easy, but it shouldn't feel like you're injuring yourself, right? So I want to work on inner rotation and then bending the knees and then holding it here. And so right away, I feel this action of the inner rotation and I feel expansion through the structures, right, of the hip flexors. And as I'm holding it, now my inner thighs and my quads are beginning to fire up. As now I'm holding it a little longer, my outer calves are beginning to kind of take some action. And so often we all we do so many things through outer rotation, right? We forget to also do some things in inner rotation. All right, start to release, come back up, walk your feet back in, and neutralize by walking it out. Oh, so going back to what I was saying previously, you know how sometimes like if you're running or something, and you kind of like twist your ankle, or you feel like your knee or your ankle is a little out of alignment, what do we do? We do that, right? Why do we do that? Because we instinctively know if something is out of alignment, then you kick it, and you separate it, right? Separate, separate, separate. If you separate it, maybe through that movement, they kind of get back into place, right? So that's why we do some of these things. Sometimes also when you, pull, when you hurt your thumb, right? What do you do? You pull on the thumb, you're traction right? We instinctively know that these things help. Right? If you throw out a shoulder, right? You see these movies where people like pop shoulders, what do they do? They pull it back out of the socket to put it back into the socket, right? So it's the same thing. If you're slightly misaligned, sometimes by separating and realigning that works. Okay? Alright, let's come back. Alright. Feet together, knees together. Inhale. Raise your arms up and back. Exhale, dive forward. Fingertips to the floor, bend the knees and step the right foot back. Palms flat, step the left foot back, down dog. Inhale, come forward into a plank. Lower all the way down to the belly. Cobra pose, progressive cobras. Hands alongside rib cage, elbows drawn back. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra. 
to your belly and your lower ribs are staying on the floor, elbows drawn back, let's drop your shoulders, engage on the back. Press into your hands, lift up a little higher, so now your ribs are away from the floor, so is the belly, elbows are still actively drawing back, and toward each other. Press into your hands, lift up even higher. Now, if you have full extension of your arms to take cobra, great. If you don't, keep the elbows bent. Go only uh, into the uh, deepest extension as you can comfortably get into it. So again, you want a little bit of effort. You don't want it to be all effort, right? When it's all effort, your muscles react. And slowly, start to lower down. And take it back to child's pose. Inhale, take it back up to down dog. Let's we'll stick with pigeon. Inhale, left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. Lag the left shin to the floor. So you're in the pointed left toe position. You're on the top of the shin. Left knee, left thigh. Angles up to the side, 30 to 45 degrees. Walk your hands back. Lean your right knee further back. For today, because we did so much hip opening. For those of you who have the ability, we're going to go a little bit deeper. All right, let's all try and see where you get. Take the left seat down. You're going to take the left foot, flex it, and move the left heel as far forward to parallel the shin to the front of the mat as possible. Now, you might not be able to do that fully. You might have to readjust and draw back in. So take that first, right? Shin parallel to the front of the mat, flex your left foot. And then see if you can draw the torso back to neutral, back to center. Right, we took the seat over to the side in order to move the heel in. Now we're going to come back to center and see if your hips can kind of manage that. Now, if you can stay here now a little more, um, more rigorous, right? But you can still find the stability here. And then walk your, your hands forward into the forward fold and go ahead and take it. If this is too much, maybe draw the heel back just a little bit. So that it's still deeper than the previous pose, which is like this. Uh, the foot is closer to the groin, and you're on the top of the shin. Now we're going to the side of the, the shin, side of the leg. You may not be horizontal to the front, to the front of that. Maybe you're about, I don't know, 60 degrees in. Right? So go as far as you can with the shin paralleling the front of the mat and then work deeper into that hip. You're going to feel it right away into the left hip, into the back of the left hip, into the front of the right. And see where you get. Perhaps, right, if you can get the shin to parallel the mat and you can square center, maybe you can come all the way down. However, you can support the hands and go forward on your 45 degrees a little bit. So you're going to feel that intensity into the hips. That's what I'm looking for, a little bit more intensity. And so hopefully today your hips are open enough to give you the ability to work deeper into this particular pigeon, right? All right, let's come back, draw the left heel back in, support with your hands, and press it back to your down dog. All right, so notice what the hips are feeling. Maybe today, because we went deeper into this variation, you really feel your hips when you come out of it, right? Whereas maybe normally with regular pigeon, eh, you feel some openness, it feels nice, but you don't feel this intensity, right? So we're looking for a little bit more depth today, since I really opened you up at the beginning of class. All right, come back to the stillness now. Second side, right leg up, draw the right knee in. Point to toe position, lag the shin to the floor, into your left knee back, elongate through the spine, and make your way forward. I think we took a breath or two here first, right? Before we went deeper. So let's do it again. All right, let's walk it back in. You're going to take the right seat down, flex your right foot, move the right heel forward to a little bit more parallel to the front of the back, right? So think about where you were in the previous side and do roughly the same. You might want to start a little bit deeper first and wait to see what you get. Take the shin parallel to the front of the mat, flex your left foot. See if you can 
square back to center. You might have to press strongly into your right hand to square back to center. Maybe that feels manageable, right? Um, but still, try to look for symmetry, right? Perhaps then you can go forward as you did on the first side. If you need to readjust, keep the foot flexed, move the heel in just a little bit, but not all the way up to the groin, maybe just in a little bit, maintain some of that um, intensity. Square back to center, lean forward. All right, so I'll give you about another six or eight breaths. We're here for a little bit of holding. I want you to get the benefits of that as well. And so remember, with every pose, there are different ways to do things, right? As long as you are working biomechanically um, correctly, and also that if it's in alignment, right? So it's really important not to just do things haphazardly for the sake of sensation, right? You need to be with some uh, proper alignment as well. Now, with this intensity, it may not be that I will go as far forward as I normally would because I made it more intense on the hips. I'm not going to be properly able to go as far forward and as deeply as I want to or normally do if I change my, my legs a little bit more differently, right? So always, anytime you adjust anything, you're going to have to consider that other things might have to give in a little bit. All right, let's release. Take the right heel back in, square back to center, walk it back to the down dog. Right? Feel what that feels like on your hips. Very different. Alright, walk your feet forward toward the hands. Take the seat down. Slide the hands out and lower onto your back. Recline twisting. Left knee comes in, left arm out to a T and gently twist to the right. And take it back to center, switch legs, switch arms, twist to your left. Back to center, draw the knees in toward the chest. And then step the feet to the floor, slide the legs forward, let the toes spread out, arms alongside the body, palms face up, Shavasana, find a relaxation, letting it all up. Begin to draw the breath back in, moving your fingers and your toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions. And then rolling over to the right side, come up to a comfortable cross-legged position. Reconnecting to an even seat, length of spine, shoulders broad, breath deep. And let the neck be free. Venmo is my preferred way of payment, and my handle is Simha Yoga Lab. And the four digit ID code is 8096 if you're prompted for it. And um, I am streaming um, actually classes of $10. If you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine. Classes are streamed through Instagram and Facebook. 
um, and then the videos are saved onto those two platforms. And then I also save the videos onto my YouTube channel, Sintha Yoga Lab. So go ahead and visit all those platforms for your videos. Thank you so much again. Be well, take care. I will see you soon.